Kia EV3, the future of electric cars in the UK. Due to hit the UK roads very soon, what's it like? What size is it? Is it well equipped? What price will it be? And is it worth buying? Welcome to our in-depth exploration of the Kia EV3, the latest innovation in electric vehicles set to make waves in the UK automotive market. In this video, we delve into the features, performance and the technology that make the Kia EV3 a game changer for eco-conscious drivers. Discover how this cutting edge electric car is designed to meet the needs of modern drivers while contributing to a sustainable future, as well as how it compares to other electric vehicles being launched in the UK. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more exciting content on electric vehicles and EV charging. I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. Well, Kia has built up a reputation for quality and features, but above all, style. Their EV6 is a real head turner, but at the top end of the price structure. Their EV3 builds on most of that technology, but aims itself very much lower in budget terms. Well, let's get the price out of the way first. It is scheduled to launch in the UK at 33,000 for the base model and 36,000 for the long range model. Is this competitive? Well, let's see where it fits into the EV range. It is 4,300 millimeters long by 1,800 millimeters wide and 1,565 millimeters high. And that puts it very much at the smaller end of EVs. The Renault 5e, shortly to be launched, is a touch shorter, but otherwise similar, while the VW ID3 and Hyundai Kona EV are almost identical in every dimension. People compare the ID3 to the Polo, but that's not correct. The Polo is shorter, narrower and lower. It's very much more like the VW Golf, which is less than an inch shorter and a touch narrower but lower. The step-in SUVs do offer that extra height which not only suits taller drivers but also makes getting in and out so much easier particularly as you get older. Well the battery choice is 58.3 kilowatt hours for the base model and 81.4 kilowatt hours for the long range and these are pretty standard battery pack sizes these days. The pack can charge at over 150 kilowatts and a 10% to 80% charge will take around 29 minutes for the standard model. Range is a reasonable 267 miles and 374 miles respectively. And that will suit the vast majority of EV drivers. Power is a respectable 170 kilowatts. It's about 200 brake horsepower, which gives it a bit of an oomph. It is the thing that people most comment on when they first drive an EV. Just the acceleration, it's very quick. It's also very smooth, no gear changes, no jerking, and almost silent. It's a weird sensation the first time you experience it. Well, gross weight and curb weight, to answer the critics who claim EVs weigh several tonnes and go through tyres faster than a rat up a drain pipe, are only about 15% more than the VW Golf, which is a very similar size vehicles. Your tyres are safe unless you decide to use all that acceleration, not to 60 in 7.5 seconds, and that puts it well up alongside the Golf GTE and only about a second slower than the Golf GTI. That's a quick car. Boot space is a presentable 460 litres, which grows to 1,251 litres with the seats folded down. And that puts it bigger than the VW Golf by 20%, and the Golf is hailed as a good all-round family car. It's in the tech world where the EV3 comes into its own. All Kia has learned on its bigger siblings has been packed into the EV3 and a load more beside. It is fully stacked. It is a Kia, so there's no need to talk about the usual things, split seats, LED lights and so other many goodies that are now ubiquitous in just about all EVs. 
But let's single out some of the differences. Well, there's a good 12.3 inch OLED display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's USB-C ports, two in the front, two in the rear. The rear ones are great for the kids with their mobile phones or tablets on their longer journeys. It's got forward collision, avoidance, highway driving with hands-on detection, lane keep assist, lane follow assist, smart cruise control with stop-go function, speed limiter assist, safe exit warning, driver ascension warning, electronic parking brake with auto hold function. It's got regen braking paddle control with eye pedal, paddle, eye pedal function and tyre pressure monitors. And that's only a small part of the tech level. What's it like to drive? Well, I quote Keir on this. Drawing on Keir's design philosophy, opposite United, the EV3 carves out its own uniquely progressive identity in a compact crossover form, with a future-facing exterior that is both playful and thoughtful, enveloping an open interior space that emphasises restorative relaxation for every journey. Hmm. Sounds like advertising speak to me. Well, the design is supposed to offer lounge-style comfort with a totally quiet cabin. And the front-wheel drive is a great help in slow-speed manoeuvring. The only downside, really, is the price. Kia have factories in Korea, China, Eastern Europe and now Mexico. So they're already fully global, but the starting price of 33000 in the UK is right at the top end of where it should be. The Mexico plant, for example, is supposed to be launching them at less than $30,000, and that is very much cheaper. And the Citroen EC3, which is a similar size to the Renault 5e, they're both smaller than the uh, EV3, but they are expected to be launching around about £20,000-£25,000. A similar size Kona petrol is mere £26,000, so the ICE EV price gap still remains. Well, compared to other EV prices, I suppose it's bang on where it's meant to be, but that remains a good five to 10,000 above where we need it to be. A quick check on Chinese prices show where this could and should be priced. If you take the Xpeng M03, yeah, that's £15,000 in China. Neo L60, £23,000. Or a Black Cat, £12,000. But there is a simply huge gap between £15,000 and £33,000 as an introductory point. Kia is still a very small player in the EV world. Having previously gone bust and then been taken over by Hyundai, they do operate separately these days. But today the EV division is booming, but still quite small, while the ICE and hybrid business is on a rapid downward trend. Well, Jim Farley recently visited China to see what they were doing different, and he was seriously impressed. It was enough to say to his finance director, very quietly but audibly, we can't even do this. Well, overall, EV3 will probably be a success despite the price, but the potential should be absolutely huge. It's a very nice car with masses of tech to please all. Size-wise, it is a genuine smallish family-sized SUV, so it could end up as your main car. It's already appearing on the leasing sites, where it's currently priced at about £400 a month, and that is really disappointing. See the Hyundai Kona EV, an older model certainly, but still a great EV. It's also exactly, almost exactly the same size, but that's down about £240 a month on the lease. Well, let's hope the EV price is inflated because it's not yet launched. Most data delivery date of December. At £400 a month, it's getting perilously, perilously close to the EV, EV6. That's only four twenty two a month. And above that, the much bigger VW ID4 at 335 That's a lot less. And stretch a bit more, you could have a Tesla Model Y at 470 which is a very much bigger and better car. Well, for purchasers rather than leasers, the £36,000 for the long range is also up there with some big players. 
the Hyundai Ioniq 5 starts under £40,000, as does the Tesla Model 3. And the Kona EV enters the field at about 36000 I am still of the opinion that this is overpriced, but it will probably prove popular. Well, as it's not available until later in the year, maybe could I suggest that you hold fire and see what else arrives, see how much they will be, and see if anything happens on the leasing deals. See, the choice is now growing, and sensible Chinese competitors will soon be here. I believe it will be worth waiting to see what makes it over here this year before plonking your deposit down on a Kia EV3. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but makes a big difference to a small channel like ours. And if you would like to support the channel, have a look at our Patreon page. We offer our Patreon members things like uh, community meetups, as uh, a community chat forum. We have behind the scenes footage and bloopers, plus more. Details down below. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Dave.